Hey everybody, I just wanted to give you a heads up before we jump into this interview. This is actually the first episode that we recorded while broadcasting live to Facebook. And since we've started doing that with our episodes, they have been a massive hit. If you have not been a part of one of our live shows, you definitely want to check it out. The way you do that is you have to follow or friend me on Facebook. That is G-W-J-O-N-E-S-I-I. Or you can follow the Buy Black Podcast page on Facebook as well. From there, we set up the events and we send them out to let people know when we'll have a live show. And then when we broadcast live, we do the interview as usual, but we take your questions and comments right there in the chat and we get them answered live. Uh, It's been a phenomenal use of the platform, and I'm really hoping that more of you will join us and be a part of the conversation. Enjoy the episode, and if you have any questions or if you have any recommendations on how we can make the platform continue to get better, make sure you shoot me an email, gerald at buyblackpodcast.com. All right, thanks for being out there, and we'll talk to you after the show. During the era where Frank Sinatra is out, you would see him in a tux or see him in a suit, but you can also see another man in bell bottoms, right? The man in bell bottoms is, is trendy, whereas Frank Sinatra is classic. The clothes that Frank Sinatra wears then could wear today. So when I teach guys how to dress sharp, I teach them to wear classic clothes because you can you can spend more money. You can invest more money into that because it's not going to go out of style. Right. And I also teach guys that the clothes we wear, don't look at them as just clothes because they're covering 90 percent of our body. Ninety percent of our body is covered by the clothes we wear. So when someone sees us, they see they can see the clothes more than us. Matter, a lot of times they see us before they can hear us, before we get close enough to speak. So. The clothes you wear is going to set the tone. It's like the cover of a book, right? It's setting the tone of what we're about to see and hear. So how how are your clothes communicating who you are? Bye Black Podcast, Episode 62. How to Dress Sharp and Take Control of Your Image with Tyron Kuttner. Welcome to Buy Black, the voice of black business. The only podcast that provides free marketing for growing black companies, education for budding entrepreneurs, and a reliable place for consumers to find and spend money in quality black-owned businesses. I'm your host, Gerald Jones, and if you learned something from this episode, be sure to subscribe and leave us a rating or review on iTunes. Ready? Let's get to work. Hey everybody, welcome back to Five Black Podcast, the voice of black business. This is going to be our inaugural episode of Buy Black Podcast Live, and I am with my guest, Ty Kuttner. He is the founder of WellDressedAcademy.com, and he has graciously agreed to be the very first guinea pig guest for Buy Black Podcast Live. So we're connecting with y'all tonight. Uh, just a couple of ground rules for you who are out there inside of the chat. So we're still going to be running this podcast as if it is me and Ty having this conversation. You guys are listening in. Um, if you have questions, definitely drop them off in the chat. If you want to leave comments or hit that heart button, that like button as many times as you want, just to let people know it's out here, share it with others. But otherwise, he and I are going to be talking. You guys are going to be listening. And then at a later point in the show, we're going to make time and room for your questions so you can get a live interaction with our guest. But I don't want to waste too much of his time because I've already been spending time trying to get this tech working. We're going to jump right into it. Ty, thank you so much for joining me today, man. Thank you for having me on the podcast. Yeah, as a really waiting to get jump right on and into this thing. Yeah, and we're going to do it. And that's exactly how we roll with Buy Black Podcast. So I'm going to hand it right on over to you, sir. Um, jump in, tell the people a little bit about your background. All right. So, you know, my story starts about, you know, several years ago. I was uh, a bus driver uh, approaching 30, a new son, um, kind of floating through life, not really feeling where things were going in my life, going through 30s, but, you know, just kind of floating through. And then uh, something devastating happened to me. You know, I found out that my girlfriend was cheating on me and uh, I had to take a hard look in the mirror. I had to take a hard look in the mirror and I know I'm jumping right into like <laughs> the meat and potatoes, <laughs> but uh, I had to take a hard look in the mirror and figure out like, you know, how did I allow myself to get to this point? And when I looked in the mirror, I seen a person who was slacking off as far as my appearance was concerned. So I was like, you know what? I need to start making some changes. I didn't know know necessarily where to get started, but I decided to dress like a man. 
And what I thought dressing like a man was, was dressing professional at all times. So I started wearing my professional clothes everywhere to the mall, you know, just random places, no matter what. I just wear my professional clothes and I see how people react differently to me. OK, they looked at me differently. They treated me different. They called me, sir. And I was like, hmm, there's something to this. OK, OK. So so yeah. tell me a little bit more. So you started wearing the pro clothes and uh, and people started reacting a little bit differently. So um, how did that feel when you first kind of started getting that different reaction? So it was it was like self gratifying. So I, I started getting the, the response from other people. And when I looked in the mirror, I seen a different person as well. Right. I seen the person that I wanted to be, even though nothing really changed in my reality. I seen a person that I wanted to be and it became uncomfortable to do those old things I was doing before. Right. It became uncomfortable to slack off. It became uncomfortable to be a bus driver. So I just stopped going to that job. You know, I didn't even quit. I just stopped going mm. uh, because it was uncomfortable to, to be that. And I started to achieve the things I wanted to achieve because I had a list of things I wanted to do before all this happened, but I was slacking off. So I went back to that list and I started going after those accomplishments that I wanted to, to achieve. And then that was one increasing my my uh, social circle, which helped me land a better job, which eventually uh, helped me land the COO job, uh, which was a friend of mine. He was a CEO of that company. Uh, which we he, we knew each other for a long time prior to me making this transformation, but he didn't see me as COO quality. Matter of fact, there was no COO position in the company until I came along and I had that powerful appearance. He he brought me along, and then together we started to make some moves. Um, but the real transformation happened when I started teaching him because he started seeing how women react to me, and he wanted that power. So I started teaching him slowly but surely. He started to dress better. He started making more money for the organization. And he started dating out of his league. And that's when I realized there's more than than uh, there's more power in our appearance than just the clothes we wear. OK. OK. So uh, I want to go back real quick. You said that you had a list of things that you wanted to accomplish. So real quick, can, would you mind running down that list for me? What were some of the things that you had already had on that list that you wanted to accomplish that you started going after immediately? Well, one of the things is when you're a bus driver, you have a lot of time to think, you know. So if I'm on the road, I was working for Greyhound, and I'll was, and i be on the road on a seven-hour trip to Montreal. You know, I live in New York, and you have a lot of time to think, you know. And when you're on that road, you have the motivation to do stuff, but you can't do it while you're driving, right? So I would have these ideas. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. One of those things was I'm going to increase my social circle. You know, I'm going to start dressing better. I'm going to uh, start going after better jobs. I'm going to start, you know, doing other hobbies. I wanted to play the guitar. It's just, it's just things that I always wanted to do and learn, but I wasn't really doing them, you know. But the problem was when I got back home, back into my comfort zone, back into the chair, or oh, I'll do that later. You know, I, I fell back into what I was doing until I was smacked in the face with that uh, incident. That's what kind of made shook me up and said, I have to do these things now. You right, know? right. And then once I started doing them, once I and I started gaining those, I started giving, getting those responses. It became easier and easier because it was instant gratification. Being a sharp guy, dressing, you know, well, you get instant gratification. That day, you start getting uh, the rewards. So that's when it started. It pushed me to, to keep going. Okay, okay. And then, uh, you know, we hear a lot about circle and the, and the power of your circle. And, and you said that was one of your goals. You wanted to, uh, you wanted to broaden your circle. You wanted to move to a, a bigger, better circle. Um, what were some of the specific things that you did to change the people that you were around? And, and what was, uh, aside from, again, being recognized by, uh, by your friend that was a CEO that you were ready, what were some of the other things that started happening when you changed your circle, uh, taking those steps? Well, once you start dressing better, the first thing that you, that I recognized was that I want people to see me. So I was getting out more. Right. I was going to more events because I I looked impressive and I know I looked impressive. So when I would go out to these social events, I now came with a different level of confidence, a different level of sharpness. And I was the, probably the best dressed guy in the room, even when I first started out. So when I would go to these events and I would go to seeing friends that I have knew all along, I had this different sense of happiness on me. And so when I would interact with them, it was a, a much higher level, a level of conversation. So I would go up with these friends 
I would be welcoming to go out. I wouldn't say, no, nah, later I go, you know, some other time I would want to go out because I wanted people to see me. And then having the type of conversations I would have put me into different places. People see me as sharp. They want to invite me to other places. They also attract other people. So I may be in a place where I have maybe 40 percent of people there are friends of mine. But now the other 60 percent want to meet me because they're like, oh, who's this guy? Right. So now I'm making new friends in these places and it just started to balloon from there. OK. OK. And so then um, you you had your friend who was already the COO or the CEO of the organization. Now, was this a for profit or a nonprofit organization? It was a nonprofit. OK. Non-profit. So he was the CEO of this nonprofit organization. Y'all were already connected. Um, and, and so he already probably already saw the, the capability inside of you. But you said you said something key earlier. You told me that he didn't think you were ready. And it sounds like you probably didn't think you were ready. But then at that point where where both of you kind of met, like I'm here now, you're here now. And you went into that COO position. Um, what what was it about? moving into that role that put you in a position where then he started to learn from you? Uh, was it, was it the clothes alone or was it the clothes and the attitude? What, what was it about that dynamic that started to shift to where the student kind of became the master? Right. Well, as friends, you know, he, we were always, uh, helping each other out. You know, we was, we was always, giving each other books, learning from each other. Even before, you know, I started dressing sharp, I was helping with the organization. I volunteered, things like that. But once he's seeing this sharp appearance, now I look more universally sharp, right? So when he brings me around different people who don't necessarily know me, they're instantly impressed. So I already had the the wisdom and the knowledge and stuff like that to be able to impress people with what I know. I was visually impressive. So he wanted that on his team and the position, what there wasn't even a, a COO position in his company at the time. Nobody held that position. He made the position uh, available for me to be there. And once I came aboard and we started to work together, we were closer together. Now he's learning things from me. So he would just randomly ask me questions like, you know, I like the way your pants fit. How do you get it that way? Like just ran, like almost like a kid would, you know, like, yeah. how do you do this? How do you do that? And I would slowly just teach him. Just the little ins and outs. I would, I would talk about the clothes he's wearing now. Like, you know, the clothes you wear now, they don't really fit you because X, Y, and Z. And then he would slowly start to do better. And then once he started to make those changes, he started to get extremely excited from the same responses I was getting from others. Because when you see yourself looking good, sharp in the mirror, or you see yourself looking good, you get really excited, you know? And that's what will happen to him. Yeah, I got I got to be honest. Um, you know, I've, I've stepped away from, I used to be a little bit sharper dresser, I think. Uh, I stepped away from that for a while, but those few times when, when I do throw something on that looks good, even looking at yourself in the mirror, it just, uh, it gives you a little bit of a different boost, a different confidence. Um, you mentioned earlier that, um, the, that your friends started recognizing the difference in the way that women looked at you. So, you know, that's a whole different dynamic from the business aspect to kind of the relationship world. So, uh, kind of what what was that change like? What did you start recognizing? And, and were there any specific comments or compliments or things that were said that really kind of showed you what it is that women were looking for in in the men that they were interested in? Well, that was probably the biggest uh, uh, realization for me. You know, so I live in New York City, and, I, and one day I was on a subway, and I just seen women staring at me. How uh, you could feel people looking. And then I would, and I would make eye contact and they would bashfully look away and smile or something. I'm like, hmm, that's never really happened before with that caliber of woman. You know, I had women who they would dress well themselves. Maybe they were lawyers or maybe they were some type of professional. And, uh, once I started getting those, those books, I was like, ah, oh, something, something to this. Uh, I would go to the mall. It was one incident, uh, where I went to the mall and there was one of the skincare products, right? They had a mall and she came over and, you know, the usual stuff. Let me, let me put the stuff on your hands or whatever. And she pulled me aside and wanted to sit down with me. And she ended up using all, almost all her products on me. But at the same time, she she's flirting with me, openly, like, rubbing my leg. She even said, hey, you really turn me on right now by the way you look. You wow. Know? <laughs> but that was, like, the first time, uh, you know, it was, yeah, it, it was the first time, like, a woman, a very attractive woman, openly, you know, without any hesitation, openly showed and flirted and all that stuff. So I was like, wow, this is. There's something to this. And as a man, 
you know, it definitely is a confidence boost when you have women who are hitting on you because usually the other way around, you know, and that's when I knew I was doing something right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So so how long, long was it from the beginning of this transformation to then you have the COO job? And then from that, how long was it before you decided, you know, what I need to do is create an academy for men to teach them how to create this change? Right. So I, I think the change officially came, I would say, like uh, springtime. So springtime, I left the I left the bus driving job. I ended up working. I used to work on Fifth Avenue which here in New York City is where the luxury stores are. So I, I, I got a job in that for a little while. I started working at Hermes for a few months. And then after I left that, I felt like I wanted bigger things because I was still kind of rising. Um, and then I'll say probably maybe 8 to 12 months after the, tra- the, the leaving the bus driver job, I became the CEO. Um, and when I realized I, I needed to make an academy is because once I made the transformation of my friend, we took a trip. And some of his other friends who grew up with him they noticed the, 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 the influence I had on him, you know, and it was asking me, they was like, man, how did you learn all this stuff? How did you learn how to, they was like, I thought I was sharp. How did you learn? I've been always trying to learn how to be more mature in my appearance. But mm-hmm. I didn't really know how to. And I thought I was, but now I see you and I see what you've done with him. Like, how did you learn this stuff? And I would just tell him like, yeah, you got to do your pants like this. You got to make your shirt like that. It's like, man, you should teach this on a regular level because where else would a guy go? to learn like the finer details of these things. And I, and that's when the idea came and I was like, yeah, you, you know, you're right. Maybe I should do something like that. And that's when I started to develop what became the Wordless Academy. Tell us a little bit about what it means to be sharp as a man. What are the keys for those of us out here who, who want to look a little bit more mature in our appearance? A lot of what uh, inspired me was I was watching The Godfather. You know, I was watching the Godfather through that whole situation, and I was like, man, these guys, you know, are sharp. You know, they're sharp. Even for, even, you know, the, the movies, is like based in the 40s. It was shot like in the 60s, and they look manly, right? And I wanted to dress like a man. That's why I started to wear professional clothes. When I started, when I started to do it the right way and understood the finer details, I became immersed in it. When I started to teach my, my guys, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't teaching them fashion. Right. I wanted to make sure that I was teaching them manly attributes. So what makes a man sharp is he is emphasizing masculine attributes of a man. So the first thing a guy needs to understand when he's trying to dress sharp or improve how he appears, his appearance, he has to make sure his fit, his clothes fit him perfectly. His clothes must fit him as, as if they were made for him so that he can emphasize the masculine features of a man, which is big chest. Wider back, big hands, right? Uh, big feet. These are the things that that men have that women don't have or kids have, right? And when you wear clothes that don't fit you well, you take away from those things. So if your if your if your clothes don't frame you prop- properly, your shirt don't look as erect or as strong as they should, or broad as they should, right? Your hands look smaller if your sleeves are too long, right? So when I started to understand these fundamentals, I started to teach my guys in that way. This is the reason why you want to be sharp. This is the, this is what makes you look good. This is all it is. Clothes that fit you. It's just that simple. And when you grasp that, now everything else is either. We can start building on the foundation. We can start going into style. We can start going into, you know, um, the appearance you have and the impressions you're giving and the colors and all that stuff. Okay. So um, I, I really connected with when you said your clothes need to frame you properly. So it's almost like you're saying that, uh, you know, we... I mean, it's exactly what you're saying. It's image is what we're talking about, right? And so I'm picturing this this work of art, this image, this this picture, and the clothing that you put on it is is the frame that you're putting around it. You're either going to put a a um, a high quality frame around it, or you're going to put kind of a sloppy frame around it. If you're framed properly by your clothes, then it's going to accentuate your natural attributes. So how can we as men figure out what that right fit is? Um, what, what does that perfect fit look like? Cause I know for me, I grew up in the nineties. So, you know, the perfect fit was a, a pair of sweatpants with one leg pulled up to your knee and a t-shirt that came down to about, you know, the mid thigh, all white, you know, uh, what was it at the time? There was like a, 
God, I forget what kind of shirt it was, but it had like Fat Albert and, and stuff on it. I don't know if it was like a FUBU Unlimited or it was something like that. But that was the style when I was coming up as a teenager and then coming through. So I, I'm sure that's not what you're talking about anymore. So <laughs> so how do we find that perfect fit for us, for those of us who, who never grew up uh, in that um, wear fit clothes kind of frame of mind? Yeah. Well, I grew up in that era also. You know, so when I when I grew up in the era where it was baggy, baggy jeans in the 90s and, you know, and and it was all about, you know, the brands you wore. Um, but what you the clothes that you wear when you start wearing classic clothes were, or you can call them professional clothes, they have a heritage to them. Right. So they're they're not trendy. So like in the 90s, you can tell the certain trends and in, in the 2000, early 2000s, certain trends in the 70s. You can tell the bell bottoms. Right. Different trends. But. All throughout, all throughout, I say the last hundred years, there's always been a classic style. So if you think about Frank, Frank Sinatra, during the era where Frank Sinatra was out, you would see him in a tux or see him in a suit, but you can also see another man in bell bottoms, right? The man in bell bottoms is, is trendy, whereas Frank Sinatra is classic. The clothes that Frank Sinatra wears then could wear today. So when I teach guys how to dress sharp, I teach them to wear classic clothes because you can, you can spend more money. You can invest more money into that because it's not going to go out of style, right? And I also teach guys that the clothes we wear, don't look at them as just clothes because they're covering 90% of our body. 90% of our body is covered by the clothes we wear. So when someone sees us, they see they can see the clothes more than us. A lot of times they see us before they can hear us, before we get close enough to speak. So the clothes you wear is going to set the tone. It's like the cover of a book, right? It's setting the tone of what we're about to see and hear. So how how are your clothes communicating who you are? You want to be in control of that, right? So I wanted to be a professional. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to be seen as that. I don't want to be seen as a kid. I don't want to be seen as somebody from the hood. I wanted to be seen as a professional. So that's why I started wearing those clothes. And to understand what clothes, how you make your clothes fit you perfect, I always just make it simple. I tell guys, you want your clothes to fit close to your body without being tight. That's usually what I tell them. And I and that doesn't guys don't necessarily know what that means, per se, because when they when they think about it, they think tight clothes. So that's why I give visual trainings and I give a visual understanding of of how clothes should frame them. You know, I show them the the certain parts of the body that is very important that should be framed. Like shoulders are very important for anything on your torso. Make sure that the shoulder is lined up, whether it's a sweater or shirt, T-shirt, dress shirt. There's a there's a seam. The way the clothes is constructed, uh, you have a, a place for your shoulder and then you have the sleeve, which is where your arm is. So where your sleeve begins is where your arm should begin. Right. So you're that little seam that goes. It shouldn't go down. Shouldn't be like in your on your bicep, because if it is, I mean, that shirt is too big for you. OK. And that's not a good frame. OK. Now. Um, now, obviously, you know. Men come in all different shapes and sizes, you know, tall, short, we're wider, we're thinner. And I know that uh, a lot of us, we have uh, we have body dysmorphia issues the same way that women do. Um, what what are your recommendations for men who just have this feeling inside of them that they can't look sharp or that nothing's going to fit them? Uh, what can they do to kind of improve upon that? Well, the first thing I tell guys is that, you know, classic menswear has been around for over 100 years. So whatever body type you have, it's been figured out. There's a reason why suits haven't changed in so long, right? So you think about women's clothing, there's always something new. There's always a new type of dress. There's always new styles for them. But menswear has not changed in over 100 years because the suit is a perfect garment. It is the best <laughs> thing you can wear. So if you're a guy and your shoulders are kind of rounded, right? That's the reason why this suit jacket has padding to give you some structure there. Right. Um, the thing is, you want to understand, you want to learn, you want to learn before you go shopping. You want to learn what it means to be sharp. And that's why I teach guys. You want to learn how to make clothes fit you well. You want to learn what your areas are. Like some guys, um, the reason why their clothes don't look good on them is because they're wearing their clothes wrong. They may be wearing their trousers on their hips instead of their waist. Right. They may be uh, they have a, a big mid, mid section. There are things that a man can do to ma- to mask those things, right? Because like I said, Winston Churchill was a big man, mm-hmm. but he was always sharp. Al Capone was a big man, but he was sharp, right? So uh, there's nothing that a man can have wrong with him 
that's going to make that that he can be sharp. Awesome. OK, I like it. And then, uh, you know, the the other variable there is going to be uh, income. So, you know, we don't all have the the kind of cash like LeBron to go out and get the tailor fitted suit with the suit shorts, which I don't even know how you get away with that. But when you're worth 400 million, I guess I guess you can do whatever you want. You walk <laughs> into the room and own it. Right. But but in real life, though, um, looking sharp without breaking the bank. What are some of the best tips that you can give to those of us who don't have that disposable income to get a whole new wardrobe, but we want to start looking sharp? Right. So the, the first thing I do is I tell guys that uh, having money doesn't make you sharp. Right. There's a lot of guys with money who still look horrible. Right. It's all about the knowledge first. It's all about the skill and understanding. Once you have that knowledge, you can look sharp on pennies, you know, not literally pennies, but you can look sharp for a lot less than, you know, spending a lot of money on clothes. So the first thing I recommend is for guys to understand how to look sharp, what it means to get that, uh, you know, good fit. Um, and I tell guys to start with the clothes they already own. That's how I started out. I didn't start out by going shopping. I started wearing clothes I already had in my wardrobe. We should all have some type of professional clothes for when we need to go to interviews or when we need to go to, you know, meetings or church or whatever, dates. You know, we all have those clothes. We all have some dress pants. You know, we all have probably have a suit or something. So I tell guys, you start with those clothes and they, they may tell me, all right, Ty, I have them, but they're not sharp. These are clothes I've always worn. Right. And I say the reason why they're not sharp now is because they don't fit you perfectly. So then that's when I go through and say, OK, you're going to take the clothes and we're going to make them fit you perfectly. And that's what my that's what my entry level 101 training is all about. Getting guys to take the clothes they own now and altering them or tweaking them so that they look sharp. And then getting comfortable wearing those clothes when it's not necessary, because being sharp, part of it is the clothes. But the other part is believing that you're sharp and you can't wear that part. Right. You have Absolutely. to be comfortable on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is um this <laughs> this is perfect. So uh, my wife just jumped into the chat and she said, in my opinion, no one should wear suit shorts. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to guess you agree with that. I agree. Uh, <laughs> so so for folks who are out there in live world, um, we're going to move into the question segment. We've already got one question in the chat that we're going to get to. I've got a couple of canned questions that I always ask for the show. And then we're going to get to your questions. So if you have questions for Ty, go ahead and drop those in the chat. We'll see if we can get two or three of those once I get my questions. And then we're going to roll a little bit more into you talking about the uh, the Well-Dressed Academy and the offerings that you do have with that. We good to go with that? Let's go. Awesome. All right. So the first question I have for you, um, and this may actually have already been answered, but I always got to ask it. You know, what is the biggest challenge that you have ever faced and how did you overcome it or what did you learn from it? And that might be what this whole show is about. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, yeah, it all started with that challenge I had, you know, when I, you know, because in, in, when that when that all happened, I was kind of already low. Right. I feel like, you know, as I as I'm developing as a man and understanding relationships and things like that, I feel like. Things like that happen when, when you're when a man is at his lowest point anyway. I think that's the reason why women stray, because a man is not he's not his his, his his star isn't shining bright. Right. And he's down on his luck. And then that's like the, the nail in the coffin. And I feel like men grow with challenge. Right. We we have to go through some pain and suffering in order for us to come out the end stronger. Right. So that was a that was a huge challenge for me because it was a rule awakening. You know, I've right. been slacking off for a long time and it was it was just it was there was nobody else really to blame. It was like I, I had to see my responsibility in that, you know, and from there I was like, OK, what am I going to do now? What am I going to do about it? What am I going to do? Am I going to going to lay down or I'm going to stand up and be a man and do what I got to do to make myself better? And that's what I end up doing. And from that, I now transform other men's lives from my challenge, from going through that and coming out the other end. I'm now helping other guys hopefully to avoid situations like that or to, uh, you know, be the best guy they can be. Love it. I love it. All right. So so the next question that I have for you is um, tools. So for me, like the biggest tool that I use, my favorite one is 10 to 8 dot com. It's my appointment booking uh, calendar. It makes me look like a genius. Um, what tool do you use in your business that saves you time, energy or money or just makes your life so much easier? What's the number one? Oh, that's a that's a big one. Uh, I would say like the technical tool that I use now that's been helping me a lot is um, I started using this this software Contra. 
uh, K, K A R T R A dot com. So it's very similar. If you're familiar with click funnels, right? It's very similar to click funnels, whereas you can build, uh, landing pages. You can have, um, email responders. It's like an all in one. I built my website is built using it, right? Um, my membership site, my, my videos, all that stuff is in that all in one package, which are like, which is very easy to put together. Like I'm not a web designer. Uh, but I'm, I'm able to put together my courses. I'm able to put together the website, able to put together landing pages, email responses. It has the funnels. It has, it tracks how long a person's watching my videos. You know, it has all these functionalities in it. And, you know, it's less than a hundred bucks a month, you know, so, um, that's been the best tool that I've had, like an really all in one tool that I've been using over the past, I'll say three months now. Okay. Wow. That's a great one. I, I know it's a few people who are, who are watching in the chat and me personally, that's a great tool. I, I never heard of that one before. So I'm going to be checking that one out when I get done. Um, so with that, I want to come back to uh, a question that we got in the chat. And, um, so the question that we got here was from Jessica and she said, what if a woman wants to dress her man? Do you help with that? And I'm going to add in, um, if you do or if you don't, uh, what are some of the recommendations that you would give to women who want to help their men dress better? Mm -hmm. Well, so the way I teach men is is not just about clothes, right? So I always like to tell people that I'm not a stylist. I'm more of an image coach. Some people call me a life coach, right? Um, and the reason why in my trainings, I start with getting the guy sharp, but that's just where it begins, right? My goal is to help men become the best them, right? So I started dressing well and then my life changed. So what I try to help guys do is change their lives. And the way I do that is by starting with improving their image, right? So if, uh, if a young lady or, or a wife wants to, wants to help their husband, the best thing that they can do for them is to introduce them to me, right? Or introduce them to my content and say, hey, check this guy out. Because the thing is, I want men to be in control of their image, right? Now, women are great when it comes to they can understand color. They can understand, OK, that looks OK. That looks good. But I want a man. The power for a man is being in control of his own image. That gives him the power and the momentum to start taking control of other areas in his life, because you don't just want to be a sharp guy like in your appearance. You want to be sharp at everything else. Right. You want to perform better at work. You want to be a better father. You want to be better performing in your business when you control your own image and you're picking out your own clothes. Then now you have the power to start doing your own thing in other areas and you don't need to ask anyone else how to do it, what to do and everything else. I love it. I love it. And I and I think that is not only is it the power, but it's the responsibility. Right. The it, It's almost like the uh, the win in the lottery type situation. If you just happen upon that money and you didn't earn it, you don't know what to do with it. You may not appreciate it. As opposed to if you have to go through that transformation yourself, take control of your image yourself, then you're going to appreciate it, know what to do with it. It's going to make you a better person. I, I, I like that. I love it. Um, so we, we got another question from the chat, Ty. Uh, this one comes from Torn, and he says, um, what do you do about jeans that are too big? Uh, trimmed up, no longer wearing the baggy, uh, the baggy jeans, no longer in that scene. So I know my boy Torn, we, we went to high school together. Uh, first time I ever dunked was, uh, on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. I put it out there. It happened in practice. I didn't do it on purpose, but it did happen. All right, I'm putting I'm putting all our business out there right now. But um, Torn has been hitting the gym hard. He he he's definitely trimmed up. He's he's. I mean, I, I see the pictures on Facebook. The man is cut. And so I guess his question is, without having to go out and buy all new clothes, um, what do you do with the clothes that you already have if they're not really in position to still look sharp on you? Right. Well, I hope every time you introduce Torin, you don't tell that story. But I'm I, I don't. Him. But I just I took the opportunity because that's that's my boy. I know he you know he can punch me in the shoulder next time he sees me. It, it, he was still way better ball player than me. But I had to I had to put that one out. <laughs> so uh, so what I do is you know I have a lot of guys in my Wedges Academy Facebook group, and they'll ask a question similar to that. They will ask about you know I'm losing weight or I'm in transition or my body is changing. You know the clothes don't really fit me well. And what I do is I tell those guys to you want to you want to have clothes that fit the body that you have now. Right. So whatever that is, if your body is changing, if you're losing weight or you're gaining more muscle, you want to do, find the clothes that you have now that fit you the best 
and then get those clothes altered to fit you better, to fit you perfect, right? Until your your body starts to stabilize because you never want to wear clothes that are too big. You never want to wear anything that's baggy because what that means is when you wear baggy clothes, it's meaning that you're, you're not filling out your clothes. It's almost like wearing your dad's clothes or your, or your big brother's clothes. And if you're in a professional environment, and it's, it's very bad for professional environments because you end up looking like you have a hand-me-down suit, right? And then people don't respect you because they assume that you can't be in charge because you subconsciously you're wearing someone else's clothes, right? And it's, a lot of this is subconscious. Most people don't really know about the, the, the rules of, of classic menswear. They don't really know the rules. So you can walk around and be breaking the rules all day long and no one's going to say anything, but they can sense it because symmetrically or subconsciously you're 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 breaking some of these rules that we can tell there's, there's something off about that like if you c- cut a clash or if you look kind of sloppy they're not going to point out oh your belt is too big but they can see something is off and they feel it and then they're going to respond in that way that's the reason why even though i speak about clothes i go a lot deeper into how clothes are communicating to others because they are communicating visually to others absolutely uh, well, Torin, I hope that helps out with the with that answer right there. Um, you know, for me, I'm on the other side of that. I I about a year, maybe a year and a half ago, was at the weight that I wanted to be at, and then I started this podcast and I started spending more time behind the computer, less time in the gym, and now I'm about 20 pounds heavier than I was. I can still wear the clothes that I have, but I don't I don't like the way I look. I don't like the way I fit. I'm on the other side of that transition. And I've come up across that that bridge where I'm like, all right, either it's time to buy new clothes or it's time to get up off my butt. And I don't want to buy new clothes. So I'm I'm on the other end of that or where I'm about to probably end up where Torn is at, um, do another detox, drop a little bit of weight and then get it tight. But then I got to get my clothes tight, too, because my clothes honestly do not fit the way that they should. And Nyla uh will help me out with that but i'm gonna take control of it i'm gonna take responsibility for that myself as you just said um let me check and see if we have one more question so we did uh my wife nyla she had one more question that we're going to take for you ty if you're all right with that um she said do you also work with teens and young men uh to dress for success early and get them to move away from the basketball shorts and i'm sure that might be in reference to uh we we got a 16 going on 17 year old who uh, he, he loves his hoop clothes even when he's not in the gym. <laughs> right. So I do uh, here in New York. I, I partner with some friends who do uh, they're in schools and they do, you know, like dress for success programs, stuff like that. I am in the process of building out the World Just Academy's membership site, which is going to be, you know, uh, for when I go to speaking universities and things like that for people who don't have the money to like hire me one on one. So that they can learn these skills, because the thing is, when I what I learn is when I speak to younger people, they want to be sharper. They want to dress better. A lot of the young people, they want to, but they don't. There's no one coming around saying, hey, here's how it's done. There's someone may say you shouldn't wear that or you should put this on. But no one comes around and say, here's how you become sharp. Here's how you look like you are, you know, a, you, you finish the game like a LeBron when he's not wearing the shorts. Right. Mm-hmm. Here's how you here's how you look sharp. Here's how you can look more, you know, uh, more decent. Here's how you can look sharp so that girls are more attracted to you or you increase your status as a as an individual. Because when you walk around and you look around at people, you see you can tell a person's status based on clothes. Right. If you see a person who's walking around in sweatpants, you could tell you, you may assume that person doesn't really care about his attire. But if now you see a young man who's 17, who's wearing some nice slacks, you know, or dress pants, a nice shirt looks comfortable in the clothes, right? We always want to be comfortable, right? Some nice shoes. And then, now he's walking around. Girls are going to look at him like, what's his story? Mm. He's interesting. I want to know who he is because he set himself apart from all of the other basketball short kids, skateboarders, right? So the girl is going to be intrigued by who he is. So I do have my, my free training that I'm It'll be out when, you know, when this when this is uh, released on a podcast, I, I just recorded the videos, but it teaches guys how to go from where they are now to start to create that first sharp outfit. But in the same time, I'm also teaching them the mindset, right, of why you want to be sharp. Um, and like I said, that training is, is going to be for every anyone, college students, 
uh, is good for height. If you start early, but if a, if a, if a, uh, a young man starts early understanding this, this could help him with college applications, interviews, right? This can help him with uh, just building people around him, like teachers who want to help him out, coaches who want to help him out, who want to look out for him. It's all about that communication, how people respond to you. And they want to uplift you because they see that you're a sharp individual. Right. You know, that's that's kind of how I that's why I got the CEO position, because you see a person who, you know, is doing something that's not normal. He's sharp. He's a sharp individual. We need to put that person in the front. And so that's why appearance and all that is very important. I love it. I love it. That is awesome. Well, I'll tell you, Ty, the, the biggest thing that um, resonated with me from this whole conversation, um, I, I pick out those little details that really hit me. And when you talked about the difference between trends versus classic um, and the fact that classic style never goes out of style, um, that is really powerful to me because I know that's the conversation I've had with my son of, well, you know, you just don't understand our generation. We do and do this. We dress like this. We dress like that. This is what my other friends are wearing. And I didn't have the language to tell him, you know, eventually you're not going to be wearing that. Eventually people aren't going to be into that anymore. Um, but having that conversation about classic style versus following trends and being kind of that classic gentleman, uh, that's huge, man. Uh, I'm definitely going to take that away in conversations that I have going forward. So, uh, what I wanted to do real quick is I wanted to give you an opportunity to just tell us a little bit more about Well-Dressed Academy. What are, um, what are the things we can find on your website? What are the courses that you offer versus the services that you offer as a consultant? And um, kind of where can we find you? What, what, where can we um, connect with you? Yeah, so my website is Well Just Academy. Um, and my goal is to help guys become the sharpest man in the room, right? Any room that they're in, to be the sharpest man in the room, especially your living room, right? Because that's where it starts. And that's basically you, you become a sharper in your own mind. Uh, and within my services that I have are um, I do one-on-one coaching. Right. So guys would, you know, sign up and they'll get on a free uh, call with me, a strategy session. We'll find out where they are, you know, um, where they want to go and we're stopping them from getting there. And now you may think that guys are calling me because they don't know what to wear or they may have a wedding coming up. Most guys sign up with me because they feel something is missing in them. Right. They feel inadequate in some area. Right. Maybe they are starting a new job and they just don't feel like they deserve the job. Or they're trying to start their own business and they don't feel like they don't feel like the, the CEO or the boss, right? Or they're, you know, they just got married, but they don't feel like they're a husband yet. Or they don't they just don't feel like there's something that's missing in them. And they come to me because they want to be a sharper individual. They want to tackle those things in a sharper way. And then so that's why I teach them how to be sharp. And then we go after those goals, whatever those goals are they're trying to achieve. And that's what on one on one training. And it's, uh, when they sign up for coaching, it's usually like a three month process, right? So okay. I take my time. I get them sharp first, right? Then we go into interpersonal communication, right? How are we going to use your appearance to impact your life, right? So if you're in sales, how do we make you get more sales? If you are uh, doing videos, how do we increase your, your videos? If you are working in the cubicle, how do we use your appearance to, get, to move you up, to get that raise, to get that promotion, whatever it is? Whatever it is for your life, a sharp man is going to be is going to perform differently in that life. Um, the other service I have is I do uh, speaking engagements, presentations and workshops. So that's something I'm doing a lot more of. Uh, in the past, I was called to do that. People will call me up and ask me, invite me to a university. But now I'm starting to host my own. Right. I'm going to have a space where I'm going to be doing one every season and guys can come on in and they can have like a live workshop with me. Um, and then I have like a group a group coaching program which is very similar to the one-on-one training, but now we're in a group setting. And the reason why this is very valuable is because a lot of men don't have male uh, counterparts. They don't have other men to influence them. You know, once we get a certain age, we don't really have male friends, right? So you may think about, okay, I may have some coworkers, may have some, some uh, guys from back in, in school, but do you have other guys who are going to uplift you? Because that's how we grow as men, right? We grow by having other men around us. We need to kick back with just the guys. So I have this, this uh, group training where all the guys are learning together. They gain in each other's, they, they learn from each other's style, right? Um, they also learning uh, something that's, that's not really seen so that when they want to hang out, 
they can call one of the guys who went through training with them and they know that the guy's going to come looking sharp. You know, you're not going to call a guy if he's going to come with a holy T-shirt making you look bad, right? <laughs> right, so right. So we have that group training. And then we have the World Just Academy membership site, which is being built now, which will have all the videos, the training courses, um, you know, any questions about how you maintain your wardrobe, how you understand your style, you know, how you add accessories, all that stuff that, that a guy w- would ever want to know about style and being sharp is going to be in that membership uh, training. Perfect. That's perfect. And so, uh, you know, one of the last questions we have here is how do people get in contact with you? So uh, up on the live screen, we got your your Facebook, you know, at Tyron dot Kuttner. We've got your IG at Ty Kuttner. Um, what about email, though? If people want to reach out directly to you to talk about those consulting capabilities that you have or the group training, uh, where can people find you there? The easy way to find me is right to my personal email address, which is Ty Kuttner dot com. I mean, at, at uh, Gmail. Um, you can find me there, ask questions. A lot of times people just hit me up on uh Facebook Messenger. You know, they ask questions, they send me photos, and that's the reason why I created the membership site. For you know, a lot of guys ask me the same questions over and over. So I'm creating these videos so that you can get the visual representation of what it means to be sharp. Because like I said, uh most guys don't really know. And it's not too many resources for this. You can go to a clothing store, but you go to a clothing store. And the guy that's helping you isn't even sharp himself. Mm. How can he make you sharp? Or the mannequin isn't sharp, right? If you go to a tailor and the tailor doesn't look sharp or the tailor is used to working with guys who dress average, the tailor is going to make you average. So that's why I tell guys, before you go shopping, before you go to a tailor, understand what it means to be sharp. And that's why I give my free trainings on my site um, where guys can get themselves started. Okay, doke. So I'm going to do a quick transition here just on the screen. Um, and, uh, as I'm asking you this final question, what I put up on the screen for the folks who are in the live chat is, uh, an image from your website. It's the dual image of you in the bus driver clothes and then you looking like the sharp man next to the private jet. Um, and, and as, as we're taking a look at that image, I want to ask you the final question I always ask on Bob Black Podcast. What is your number one piece of advice for our listening community as a whole? All right. So my, my number one piece of advice to people is that your appearance, how you appear matters a lot. OK, it's not about what other people think of you. It's about what you think of yourself. You communicate how you feel about yourself by how you appear. So if when you when you don't care, you come out, you see some people coming outside in pajamas these people don't care about themselves in that moment, right? That's how people are going to treat them. And I tell people at all times, you never know who you're going to bump into. So I am sharp every single day. You're never going to see me in jeans and t-shirts and sneakers ever because you, I, you never know when opportunity is going to come your way. Whatever you're going after, whatever goals you're trying to achieve, there is a person who has the key to that door. But you don't know when you're going to meet that person. And if you're not prepared visually, if you don't feel sharp, if you don't feel at your A game, you're not going to approach that person properly or you're not going to approach that person at all. And that may be the last time you're going to get that opportunity. So always prepare yourself by being well dressed and being sharp. That is incredible, man. You have dropped so many gems for us today. I'm really glad we hooked up. And, you know, for those of you who are watching live. I really appreciate you guys being out here listening to the show. If you got something from this episode, please share the video when it comes out. But tell people to go to iTunes, to Stitcher, to wherever it is that you get your podcasts and start listening to Buy Black Podcast. This is the type of quality information that we bring to the community, whether it be as an entrepreneur, men, women, non-binary, whatever you may be. We are bringing you the type of information that is going to help you be a better you, a better business owner, a better person. And so definitely help us continue to spread the information for the show and join us for the future live videos and Bye Black Podcast community Facebook group. All right. That's all I got for you guys today. Tyler, that's all I have for you. If that's all you have for me, I really appreciate you being here, bro. I appreciate you having me, brother. All right, y'all. And we will catch you in the next episode. We're out. Thank you for joining us for that 
really engaged episode with Tyron Kuttner. As you guys could tell, we had a lot of questions coming in from the chat. We had a lot of engagement going on during that episode, and it was really informative. And we were able to even pull out a lot of things that I may not have been able to ask if it was just me alone. So this new format is really great for our platform and our media as we move forward. If you have not yet gone to become a part of this community, I want you to go find me and follow me on Facebook at G-W-J-O-N-E-S-I-I. And of course, follow the Buy Black Podcast page. On top of that, I need to remind you all that you are the reason that this show is so successful and you're the reason that we're going to continue to keep growing. And so if you have not recently, I want you to go and find one person in your circle, one person in your network who needed to hear what Ty shared today. And I want you to get them to subscribe to Buy Black Podcast. If they're not a podcast person, then get them to download the app and you can look into the show notes. And we have the subscribe and the download app links right there. Share them with someone for this episode and get another person listening to the podcast. Every new listener we get, that's a new person we have in the network. It's a new opportunity to get a guest. It's a new opportunity to help somebody to grow their black owned business. So please do me that one favor. Find one person and share with them by black the voice of black business today. And we will catch you all in our next live episode this coming Wednesday on Facebook. I hope to see you there.